Those who caught the 2008 reality show Scream Queens may remember how it paired 10 aspiring actresses with hair-raising challenges in order to compete for a role in the sixth installment of the Saw horror movie franchise. This grueling, weeks-long audition process had contestants push themselves to the brink to prove that they had what it took to realistically portray the main characteristics of a woman in movies, being hot, and also the victim of a violent crime. Or like a lady detective with glasses who is still kind of hot but in a brown haired way and also her life should be in danger at some point. Hosted by some of Hollywood's douchiest bags of the late 2000s, this show was a problematic fever dream from the very first episode in which our 10 queens of getting killed are objectified, humiliated, and harassed in ways that most of them hadn't experienced since their previous audition to be in a movie. So bring an eight x 10 headshot, prepare a one minute monologue and take your top off so we can watch the on-screen ego death of 10 women with a dream in today's TV that's terrible for society installment of Clip Breakdown. Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other such content found here on the web. And we break it down like the audition sides of a horror movie you don't even want to watch. To look at each individual clip and decide if it's an actress worthy of the silver screen or a non-union extra who can sit in the background and shut the up. But before we get into it, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. That way you never miss new videos from me. I've also got merch and a Patreon where you can get exclusive content. Also, do we see the new neon sign? I am obsessed with the way it came out. Ah, uh, that's called branding. Have you heard of her? This is not a paid shout out, but I need to thank the Etsy seller, Handmade Tea Neon Sign. They have rave reviews. I was excited to work with Dave specifically who helped me come up with this concept and quoted me lower than any other neon sign store that I seen and I think it looks better. It's more detailed and so beautiful. But enough about that. I'm trying not to speak too much in this episode because I have a Halloween party in two and a half hours and this is not even the makeup I'm wearing for that. So we're f I'm also going to be editing this uh, episode myself and uploading it due to failure to plan properly. So that's why I'm stress eating all of this chocolate. Ah, it's, it's fake, it's plastic. This candy is plastic. That's called filmmaking, everybody. And you would know that if you were obsessed with filmmaking in high school or in the 2000s like I was, and like the person who recommended this show to me brought it back to my memory. I'm talking to you, uh, TikTok user Autobiographic Caleb, who tagged me in a clip of this show saying, I know you watched this in high school and wanted to be on it because every gay graduating high school 05 to 010 was obsessed. You'd make a funny clip breakdown about this. Thank you so much for your inspo, and I hope I do you proud. So I believe this show originally aired on VH1. They were very well known for their mm, one-offs of reality shows, some of which kind of really caught on and became a whole franchise of reality TV. That wasn't the case for this one. And in fact, I think the whole concept was originally meant to be a advertising platform for upcoming horror films. In this case, Saw 6. I don't know when I stopped watching the Saw movies, probably around Saw 2. Like I saw Saw 3 maybe, but not all of it. And then I've seen clips from all of them when I was bored. But Saw 6, I couldn't tell you what happened in the whole lore of Jigsaw in that one, but I did watch the scene where the winner of this show was featured because that was the prize. You got to be featured in Saw 6 in a, what they called breakout role. I'm like, you don't know if someone's gonna be a breakout star in a role until after the movie comes out. I think they mean like walk on role. There was another acting show on Soap Network or something like this, a competition to be in the next soap opera star. And I watched all of these religiously. So you were right, Caleb, I could not get enough and I wanted to be on any show that let me become a sudden breakout star. So this was fun to rewatch. And it's also fun to rewatch because like all of this seemed so much more, I guess like the production value felt more in line with other reality shows of today when it was first airing. But now looking at it, I feel as though maybe this was a really low budget kind of thing, like 50 grand to shoot the whole thing because like in the background, these girls have some tinsel and a tree with like these ornaments on it. It's like, what in the Christmas Jiminy? That being said, they do a fine job at telling the story, producing it in a way that is very disrespectful to women. But anyway, let's meet these aspiring actresses. There are 10 contestants, another sign of a pretty low budget show. It's probably gonna be like at least 10 episodes, maybe 11, maybe eight. I don't remember. We're only focusing on the first one right now so that we can meet 
all of these young aspiring hopeful actresses, some of whom do actually have a little bit of experience and some who just kind of seem like they pretend that they do. I have the innocent girl next door that's going to kill you in your sleep type of a look. When I was eight years old, I did an ABC sitcom. I did a Nickelodeon show called Caitlin's Way. I was classically trained. I was trained for film. I was trained for everything. Oh great, my baby just stopped breathing. Now what? Also, how do you land a commercial jet? And quick, we need someone to perform heart valve surgery on a miniature horse. But no worries, because Jenny here learned how to say yes and at a three week acting workshop. And now she's been trained for everything. I know she meant that she was trained for every type of acting, but that is still a very bold claim to me. Like at this point, we're not even seeing a natural or believable performance from her clip in hair extensions in the role of being properly attached to your head. So let's wait till you win a few challenges before you start talking about all the and Meryl Streep performances that you have. By the way, it's crazy that in 2008, the girl who played Caitlyn in Caitlyn's Way on Teen Nick was not getting booked on more regular acting jobs and auditioned for this reality show. That means it's basically hopeless for all the rest of us. She looks as though she was carefully engineered to play the hot lab coat lady who says forensic science things on NCIS. And here she is begging for work on VH1. Caitlyn of Caitlyn's Way, I hope you're doing okay. Actually, I looked at the IMDb page of her and several other actors, and it seems like many of them will have very, you know, respectable acting careers since then. They, they at least seem to be doing it full time, which always makes me feel better. I'm like, okay, this show didn't ruin the career of everyone who was on it. Just the real uggos and losers. Just kidding. So this show was more or less hosted by three people who purported to be mentors, sort of in that Tyra Banks sort of uh, America's Next Top Model sort of way. Oh no, this is not Lionsgate television. They're gonna copyright claim this instantly. I know it. Oh, thank God for sponsors. Anyway, this first season, James Gunn, who is a very accomplished writer and now director, who you may know from directing Guardians of the Galaxy and Suicide Squad. He also wrote all of those along with Dawn of the Dead, Scooby-Doo 2. Up until 2008, his biggest movie was Scooby-Doo or Slither, which I loved. He works as the director of the acting scenes these girls do. And then we have Shawnee Smith, who is like the reverse bear trap girl from the first Saw movie, who kind of escapes and tells her story later on, but then becomes like a prodigy of Jigsaw and is basically present throughout the whole series. And John Homa, who is a like acting coach, who acting coaches the girls in the meanest way possible. It's stories like this that kind of make me want to go back to my bad habits, but I cannot do it. As any of you might know, if you've ever tried quitting a bad habit, it's tough. And the phrase cold turkey is best reserved for a poultry farm in November because mama, we all need a little bit of help when it comes to reaching for healthier alternatives to the things that no longer serve us. And no, I'm not talking about reading the latest self-help book from the MLM girly on your timeline. I'm talking about Fume, the sponsor of today's video, who help us look at the problem a different way. When you look at it logically, not every single act within a bad habit is bad for you. So one approach is to not change drastic things about your life, but just remove the bad from your habit. Fume does just that. It's an award-winning, innovative device. It doesn't use electronics or face-exploding batteries. It's all natural. And instead of vapor, Fume just uses flavored air. And those flavors are made from natural ingredients, not chemicals. And I'm talking delicious flavors. Replacing your bad habit is very easy because Fume is really enjoyable. Like, go to town, sis. They really did put a high level of detail and thought into creating this. There's an adjustable airflow device with magnets that click. It's like a fidget spinner. It gives your fingers lots of things to do to de-stress your hands while you're breaking bad habits. Because let's face it, giving up certain things can be stressful and de-stressing during this time will be very helpful in your long-term success. From what I hear, studies show, l allegedly not a doctor. Like seriously, the flavors are fun. Like a white cranberry and maple pepper. And these are the newly released Fume Cores. These provide an incredible flavored air intake that really just like gets your mind activated in a good way. It could not be easier. You just load one of your fume cores into your fume, which they call the world's first flavored air device. And I'm like, yeah, never even thought of what that is. So good. I definitely wasn't sure what to expect, but I'm telling you now, Ooh, it's so surprising how much flavor they pack into that little core. This pepper and maple is sweet, but also kind of cooling. And you could even do like an orange vanilla or a, a sparkling grapefruit. But I also love how beautifully designed this is. It's weighted in my hands and the smooth wood and the fidgety part. This was good invention. I get it. We all put off stopping things because it's 
hard. But switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 150, 1,000 customers with thousands of success stories, and there's no reason you can't be one of those. Fume, join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup with destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com slash nickdoramio or scan the QR code and use code nickdoramio to get 10% off when you get the journey pack today. I was kind of hoping going into rewatching this that Shawnee would be the biggest ally to the girls being the one who actually was a working actress in Hollywood who would understand the unfairness and the dangers and the pitfalls of working in film as a woman. But uh, I can tell right from the beginning, she's not quite the loving maternal force I would want in a mentor. Let me introduce your scene partner. This is a homicidal maniac. No, you may not date him. All right, there's no need to get all territorial over him. It's fine, Miss Saw Lady. Nobody wants to date your homicidal maniac boyfriend. We do, however, request his availability for group sex. And can he bring an even louder, more threatening chainsaw with him? Oh wait, she was kidding? That's just a really tall production assistant? Okay, we're still down if he keeps the mask on and if he's still willing to cut us up on the arms and legs with some kind of weapon to help us climax. You know what, I'm sorry, I shouldn't be speaking for the whole group, sorry, lady. Are there any other areas of the body you'd like to receive sexually stimulating flesh wounds? This brings us to the first of many challenges, all of which were designed to help empower young actresses and equip them with skills that are vital for any woman in entertainment, such as begging not to be killed and pleading for their lives. Girls, if you can't bargain with an unstable man who's wielding a knife at you, you won't last a day in Hollywood, literally. And in this case, I gotta say, we have a whole variety of very creative approaches. Let's watch as all of these contestants try their best to convince this masked chainsaw warrior not to stab them. Please just let me go. I know that you have a hop. You know that you're gonna miss me. I'm pregnant with our only child, you bastard! You know what? Do it! Kill me! Damn, that last girl does not seem ready to be a mom. She said, go ahead, Gerald. Dismember me. Why should motherhood be the only thing destroying my body? Dig in, baby. Ruin me. Ruin me all the way. I'm not gonna act like this TV show was great for women. At the time, it seemed very on par with a lot of the other stuff on reality TV. I will say that. My only issue watching it as a kid was like, why can't we have one for the scream kings of reality TV? Like, I wanna be on the Saw movie. The heartburn that I'm suffering with right now is so unbearable. There we go, that should be better. Oh, no branding. As we saw with Caitlyn of Caitlyn's Way, some of these actresses have had a little bit of film experience. For example, we have Lino. She played Asian Bride in Repossession Mambo and Salon Receptionist and You Don't Mess With the Zohan. So I don't know if you caught her at the Oscars that year, but then some people are complete newbies who have never even taken an acting class like Tiandra, who, this is a spoiler alert. If you don't wanna know who wins the whole series, plug your ears. She won the whole series and did a great job in her scene. I think it was two scenes in Saw 6. She cuts off her own arm and they use CGI to do it. I was like, ooh, Forrest Gump, Forrest Gump is and quaking. This first challenge where you're basically just, they put a chain on your leg and they're like, beg that guy not to kill you. Feels a little exploitative, but it's also that thing that I always hated from improv classes where it was like, everyone has to try in their own way to accomplish this one thing. So like everybody tries to think of the most creative, unexpected way of approaching it where it's like, beg him not to kill you. And you're like, if you kill me, then I won't be able to suck your dick all Halloween. And it's like, okay, that was, that was cringy. It reminds me of like this, um, we visited a horse in rehab and like you had to figure out how to make it walk backward. Like everyone had to go up, grab their horse's rope and figure out how to make it walk backwards. The answer is you shake the rope like that and the horse was trained to step back, but no one knew that. We were all just like back and like no one knew how to do it. I just wanted to feed the horse a crab apple. These glasses, by the way, are really pushing it. But now everything's in three dimensions. Tiandra, who really nailed that whole thing by not being too crazy and also being emotionally like available for the whole scene. I think she's a great actress. She rightfully won. That means she's immune from elimination from the callbacks, which are the final five girls get called in to be critical critiqued on their like screen tests that they do at the end of the episode. Each episode basically involves a acting challenge, acting class, and director's challenge. The girls all get to know each other in the hot tub. Tiandra is sort of the underdog from not having any classes or uh, formal acting experience. But next up is their acting class with John Homa, a I guess world renowned coach who teaches acting. And he was so successful at it that he doesn't even have an active IMDB page. Either way, he's like, I can be a dick if you're not willing to give as much 
much as I give you. I'm giving you everything as your teacher. And then all he does is give really horrible insults and bad advice. And it all starts with this acting class for which the syllabus seems to have been created by the male gaze. I would like each of you to eat this piece of fruit as seductively as possible. I'm a very sexual person, and so I definitely went for a banana. Okay, she said, what's the most sexually powerful fruit on the planet? A banana. And what's the most sexually powerful thing on my head? A bandana. Coincidence? I think not. I can't believe Mr. Angry Early Aughts over here has the audacity to tell these aspiring actresses to eat fruit as seductively as possible and then watches them like they are all deranged when they do this. Girls, girls, show some respect to the Saw franchise. This is the film series that once showed a man dig through his own intestines for to learn how to be a more reputable accountant. This is just sleazy. John is about to be like, look at you harlots, conducting foreplay with fresh cherries, doing analingus on an apple, and putting nipple clamps on nectarines. It's disgusting. Nobody can say that these contestants aren't giving their all. He said the word seductive, and these girls immediately jumped into eating the messiest plum ever and moaning for a stoic, hypercritical father figure. An alarmingly seductive scene. Snacks, healthy. Bras, sticky. P***s, throbbing. And this is only day two of the shoot for these freaky, frightened fruit baskets. Oh my god. I forgot to turn on this backlight, which is my favorite thing of the whole thing. Is that good? Purple? We're gonna do purple. Anyway, yeah. The girls are eating their fruit sexy. Ingesting lots of, lots of roughage. That's Hollywood, baby. Your septic system couldn't even handle this high fiber household. That's the glamour of Hollywoodland. Auditioning, callbacks, getting attacked, only here in the land of Lala. Seriously, I get so mad that his only instructions were like as seductive as possible. And then he's like, oh, what the f girls? Guys, geez. Look, I asked for a simple seduction. I get a bunch of girls having sex with fruit. So obviously the seduction worked. Although to be fair, the cast had been hooking up behind the scenes with a few of those seedless grapes. There was a rumor going around that they were the original bandmates from the California Raisins. Nope, sorry girls, those were not claymation musicians. They weren't even raisins. You just had sex with some of the weird withered grapes that get left at the bottom of the produce bag. <sighs> it's a lesson we all learn once we move to LA. Ow. A lot of the girls are like, oh, Okay, I guess we are idiots. I love Lino for being like, mm, hold up, John Homa. Don't get mad at me just because you were made fun of for your last name your whole life. No, I just thought we looked like fools, actually. See, Lena, that's up to you if you look like a fool or not. You're the one that gave the banana not me. Don't even give him Well, it was damn close. And that's even worse. You either suck the banana or you don't. Anything in between has no place on the silver screen. It's called committing to a role. And now you all look like idiots. Jessica's covered in orange pulp. Michelle is being chased by bees. And Joanne is in the hospital for swallowing the avocado pit that she tried to deep throat. You ladies all look so stupid by doing this stupid, stupid thing we asked you to do. I'm shaking with I don't like it. The producers really said, let's tell a bunch of 20 somethings to finger bang a fruit cup and then gaslight them when those whores decide to make it into something sexual. I'm like, okay, I, if I were on the show, I'd be like, all right, I get it. We're not here for respect. We're just doing sexy sh for the male viewers of VH1 because they're trying to increase their audience demographics of 18 to 24 year old men. Well, those men are all idiots and they barely graduated high school. So let's not and work too hard to impress them. All we gotta do is lick this banana. But no, I guess John Homa here, he wanted it to be a little more um, subtle, which like, then say that. What kind of acting coach? He didn't ask for a simple seduction. He said, make it as seductive as possible. Like, do you watch porn? That's as seductive as possible. Then he changes the instruction and then people are like, okay, fine, we'll do that. You should have said that. Like people are like, mm, I'm subtly eating this fruit like uh, Sharon Stone when she flashes her you know, it's a little subtle, but yet another twist from the master of twists. Halfway through that piece of fruit, you've been poisoned. This is easily the most stressful Jamba Juice that I've ever been to. Like, I just wanted a tropical acai bowl without granola, but then the staff got horny. The fruit has some kind of time-released poison in it. This has just been a real roller coaster for me in terms of smoothie bowls. But surprise, surprise, once the girls get some actual direction and specificity uh, that's based in reality, they give some performances that are surprisingly apt and based in reality. Who's the last person you think of that you're never gonna be able to say goodbye to? 
Take a big deep breath and eat another grape. That's me finally listening to my body and choosing a healthy snack. Like, oh my God, my body is really fed up with me. It's not that I don't live for the high stakes drama and sexual tension of unprocessed food, but challenges like this make me feel like the torture scenarios in Saw 6 are going to be a little more subtle. Like, is Jigsaw going to record a tape of reverse affirmations? He may be an evil genius, but there's no way he's better than I am at coming up with my own negative self-talk. Take a deep breath and eat another grape. No, you eat another grape. You, you, why is your hair overgrowing your sunglasses? Like a mighty oak. Like Tyra Mail in America's Next Top Model, which seems like a pretty strong influence over this show. Every time a new challenge is announced, it's done with some sort of horrific setting. Like it's a envelope hooked on a hook, which I'm like, ooh, hooks, fishing, I hate it. Or in this case, it's a lovely spread of fruit and crackers from the fruit and cracker section of Kroger's, but then they open this electric skillet and it's full of snakes and they're all like, oh my God, snakes. And they clearly knew about it ahead of time and also took some additional shots of the snakes crawling around their feet. It's like they were loving the snakes, they're holding them, they're petting them. It's a little, uh, a little staged, but whatever. So is this fake candy, so. I'm gonna crack a tooth if I keep trying. It just looks so shiny and good. While there may only be one potential scream queen that's destined to be cast in a real horror movie, some of these contestants are still expertly creating screen time for themselves while they're on reality TV. For example, these girls find out that their first acting challenge or screen test involves getting into a bathtub, which means they all have to choose between either simulated nudity or they can just go fully nude on set. And this seems to upset Jessica to the point where she makes a scene for several scenes. The very first challenge that we do. Oh, let's get everyone naked in a bathtub. I'm disappointed that they're even giving us this I mean, come on, have some pride in yourself. This crazy situation, I'm way too fired up and I feel strongly about not doing it. You heard her. Jessica will not be revealing her breasts on camera without building up enough suspense to demand a fair share of the storyline. I knew I was gonna do it. That's what I felt like doing in that moment and that's what I wanted to do. Yes, mother, you better work that bodily autonomy. When it comes to their own bodies, people can give their consent or revoke their consent at any time and for any reason, even if that reason is dramatic tension. I believe that women and people in general should have total control over their bodies and how they are treated and displayed so you can make those decisions and change your mind without giving any reasoning or justification. So I really applaud Jessica for this power move. Keep those producers guessing. It. And then if it feels right when the camera rolls, flash those bathtub titties and steal the whole scene. This is your world. They're just videotaping it. Remember that. If you're on a reality show, fuck it. Do what you want. Don't listen to the producers. They don't, they don't, they don't, they want to control you. Don't do it. So anyway, the scene, the acting challenge involves them being like, honey, I'm getting into the tub. Would you like to join me? Oh, I guess you'll have to wait until I get clean until we can get dirty. It's like, are you going to on him during sex? What's dirty? Sex is not dirty unless you're shitting on him. Then it's shitty. I always swear too much. When I'm editing my own videos, it's like I have to bleep all of this out and it's weirdly tedious. So then like a fake snake is is like comes out of the tub with a, a fishing line and they're like, it may look cheesy and cheap, but you have to pretend like it's the scariest thing on earth. And it's like, yeah, it looks cheesy and cheap because this whole show is cheesy and cheap. But that's Hollywood, mama. This is VH1, not goddamn HBO. So uh, the girls are all kind of talking about how each of them did in the scene. Kyla definitely was a little cartoonish in her acting, not giving a super realistic performance. So five girls are listed on a hook in the hallway. And Michelle, a 21 year old from Texas, is very upset that her name is even on the list to go to a callback, even though the girls have not yet been told whether that means some of them are in the top, some of them are in the bottom. They don't know if they're up for elimination or up to be a winner. But just the fact that there's a possibility it could be the former, she's like, mm-mm, uh-uh, uh-uh. Whatever, I'm pissed, I'm pissed. It's my first elimination and my name was on the list to go home. They're gonna throw away this talent away and it's their loss. Ooh, I love the idea of being so upset that you can't even curl your own hair. She fully grew up with a live-in nanny and those velour sweatpants with the word brat jewel encrusted across the that's an actress. For example, she could play the spoiled rich girl in a Shirley Temple movie who proves that it's actually more adorable to be the precocious child of an impoverished servant. Shout out to the girl who's hula hooping right behind her. These are scene stealers from the jump. They all deserve 
awards. Oh, the camera's pointed at Sarah. Don't you like to have Christmas on Christmas Island? Like, yes, I would. So all of Michelle's complaining seems a little for nothing when it turns out that she and Sarah were actually called to the callback because they were the top two. In fact, Sarah gets the more painful feedback out of the bunch. Sarah, you are not the hottest lady here in the house, but you have skills. This sounds like my performance review when I worked at that brothel. Yes, I used the stage name Sarah because I don't know what names are sexy or not. Fanny, hot Fanny, F me Fanny. Now that's sexy. Anyway, why would Shawnee say that? The first part of the feedback felt a little unnecessary. She's like, Sarah, you are the least bangable out of everyone in the room right now, but you are capable of doing your job. So it's a little weird. Like, what even are you? And Michelle next to her is like, yep, it's so true. I would never f you. I'm so sorry, Sarah, love you. Anyway, it does turn out that Sarah is the winner of the challenge because even though she doesn't quite have that it factor coming through on camera, she seems to be what they describe as a little plain Jane. She is the most consistently good at performing throughout each of the challenges. Now it comes up for the bottom three, which includes Kyla, who has been praised throughout this episode for being the most gorgeous girl in the room. She uh, definitely is beautiful, and that's not lost on James Gunn, world-renowned screenwriter, who should probably be embarrassed about this. You are unbelievably freaking hot, and <laughs> that is more of a help than some people might think. There are a lot of great in this town, and it won't make up for bad acting. It, it makes up a little bit. Sorry, Kyla, you've been eliminated from the show, but the good news is the screenwriter with weird sideburns is willing to cast you as a featured extra in exchange for sexual favors. James Gunn is like, it's true. Uh, my next movie has a part you'd be perfect for. Her name is Racially Insensitive Massage Parlor Hostess, and it's all yours if you can remain unpregnant and make it through this party I'm having at my mansion without crying. By the way, uh, James Gunn there is from a, I don't know, I would call it a Nepo baby squad of brothers. For example, Sean Gunn is his older brother who, by James Gunn, Tromeo and Juliet. Then he was brought in for all of the Gilmore Girls as Kirk. And then he was in like, I think the second Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Brian Gunn is an actor producer. Then Mark Gunn is a cousin who is an American screenwriter from Pasadena who wrote Brightburn along with James. All these brothers and cousins want to each other. That's what it sounds like to me. Oh no, well James also wants to fuck his actresses because he's pretty much a pig in that whole exchange. The young woman who does get uh, actually eliminated from the show is Joanne, who is the English girl who is like basically a little too shy on camera for the first episode to really show any personality and therefore didn't do well in the challenges, which as James points out is a big problem for actresses. Yeah. Biggest problem an actor can have. <laughs> That's like a plumber saying every time I get around the pipe, I have a nervous breakdown. I don't see how that plumber's drug problem has anything to do with being an actress. Oh, that was just a poorly improvised analogy from the highly paid horn dog screenwriter. Great, so glad you're here. Thank you for putting this into the context of a hypothetical man who has an irrational fear of the toilet he's fixing. Is it too early to submit my nomination for best original screenplay? Why no it's not, but it is all the time we have for today's installment of Clip Breakdown. Do you remember Scream Queens 2008? Not to be confused with Scream Queens, The Ryan Murphy Show with all of those mean girls. Let me know in the comments below. Also, give this video a big thumbs up if you wanna see even more clip breakdowns on early 2000s reality like this, the VH1 reality whole show boom, reality hole. That's my show. It doesn't get realer than that hole. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me several times a month, mama. Also, I've got merch and a Patreon where you can access exclusive bonus episodes, virtual watch parties, and more. Click that notification bell icon. That way you'll always be the first to know when you've got a call back to the worst job of your life. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for cracking your teeth on this resin candy with me today. I will see you next time. Yeah. Happy Halloween.